Hello everyone, this is Greg Oki Silverback out at Collector Mania in Parker, Colorado. Uh, today I'm going to do a deck tech uh, commander on the new Amakat cre uh, legendary creature. His name is Temet, Vizier of Nactamon. He's a legendary human cleric. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature token you control gets one plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked. It has the embalm feature. Now, I'm not sure if that's good for for an EDH commander, but it could be useful if he's died like six times, I guess. It'd be a little cheaper to bring in a, um, a token and then put him back in the command zone that way. Anyway, so that's my, my uh, general. For lands, I'm playing ten planes, just basic planes, and thirteen islands. <clears throat> Other lands assortment of lands with blue white um, I also need artifacts uh, so I play the dark steel citadel which is indestructible I can turn it into a creature and make it an indestructible creature I'm using port town it's a blue white um, planar island um, if I show one I can bring it in untapped if I don't have a island or a plane in my hand then it just comes out tapped <coughs> Blue-White Guildgate, Arcane Lighthouse, get rid of that nasty Shroud and Hexproof stuff. Nectos, great card for one or two uh, colors of a commander deck. Temple Enlightenment, another one that does blue and white, and I get a scribe when it comes in, but it does come in tapped. Fallen Wild, so I can go get the Plains and Islands. Nephilia Academy. Um, if people are destroying hands, this kind of helps. I don't, it, it does help with uh, one of my creatures because it does make the colorless mana. Westville Abbey, which is great with tokens. Is I want to bring this guy out. If I got a bunch of tokens, it's real easy to sack them, and I got an indestructible flyer. One of the new lands called Irrigated Farmland. It does have cycle, does make both colors, and it also has the, the land types, planes, and lands, which can be helpful for searching out. Ghost Quarter, get rid of some of those lands out there that are just OP. <coughs> Another blue white comes in, I gain a life. It gains a life, but you never know. One life could do it for you. The Lunkery Tower. So if I'm drawing a lot of cards, this thing can be really handy. <coughs> That's my lands. Now I'll go to my creatures. If I can get this out on turn one, opponents are very, very upset. <clears throat> Seer Ascendant has lifelink. If I have 30 more life, it gets plus five, plus five, so it's attacking for six on turn two. Really, really good. To protect it, things like Selfish Spirits, this protects all my creatures. Grand Abolisher protects me against uh, the, the uh, Counter spell decks, control decks, because they can't do anything when it's my turn. I can pretty much cast anything and they can't stop it. Spell Skite, another way of protecting uh, Seer Ascendant or any of my creatures. Or uh, I can also use it uh, to prevent things from being triggered on my opponent's hand. Like they're going to put counters or something like that. I'll just put it on Spell Skite instead. Miss Metal Witch. This is great. Costs two and white and blue and I can exile a target creature I can exile my, my, my own creature or an opponent's creature and then it doesn't come back in until in the next end step if someone wipes a board this kind of can protect some of my key creatures <coughs> one of the new or uh, newer cards master trinketeer if I'm using this one ability to put in colorless servo artifact creature tokens then I, they get pumped up by 1-1. One, one. So that's going to be really handy. Love this guy. I've been playing him a long time. He's a flyer, and he has detain when he comes in. And it detains a non-land permanent. Not just a creature, but a permanent. So I can stop them from using some big artifact to make mana or create things or add damage. <clears throat> and this is what the creature I was talking about with the colorless mana. I can then bounce some of my key creatures, say... Sky Knight and detain someone else again. Chasm Skulker. That's this has become. If you're playing blue and EDH, this thing is like a must. It just gets bigger and bigger, and they don't want to kill it. And if they do, I get a bunch of squids 
that come out and have island walks. So it's it can be very, uh, you know, middle of the game. This can just take over a game. <clears throat> Something I'm playing a little techie that I put out is this Twilight Drover. Because I'm playing tokens, um, every time a token dies, it doesn't even have to be my token. As long as it's a token that dies, it gets a 1-1. I can remove a token to put two tokens out. So if I remove a counter for three mana, I get two 1-1 one, one flight or spirit tokens are flying. Really sounds good. Restoration Angel. This is a rescue card also. Plus it can be utilized along with Eldrazi Displacer. So I can Eldrazi Displacer my Restoration Angel. Pretty crazy. Hero Blade Hold. Another key card. Played a lot in EDH. It, what's nice about it, it does do the battle cry. It does put in two white soldiers attacking. They come out as two ones attacking. Plus anything else I'm attacking with gets a plus one out. Heliod. Awesome card. But the thing I do like is uh, this one is indestructible. It gives my creature vigilance. And I also can create two one white cleric enchantment creatures. That the wording enchantment creature can be really key if you're playing some of these cards that rely on enchantments. <clears throat> Linvala. Just an awesome card. It stops a lot of activated abilities. Most generals have activated abilities, so this just stops them. <clears throat> Grand Arbiter, Augustine. This makes my white spells and blue spells cheaper and makes my opponent's spells cost more. What can you say? This is awesome. Geist, Honored Monk. <clears throat> this is another one of those cards you want to bounce. Every time it comes in, it puts, counter, or it puts creatures out. Uh, with flying, which is great, and it's equal to how many creatures you have on the board. You bounce this three times, all of a sudden it's an 8-8 eight, eight attacking. And it has vigilance. <clears throat> Mold Drifter, another staple commander. Um, another one to bounce. So I'm drawing cards with my deck. Mold Drifter gives me cards. Bounce it, get some more cards. I can attack with it and then bounce it. I can block with it, then bounce it. If I'm attacking... Windmake Rot. If I attack that turn, it comes in and puts out another 3-4 bird token. And whenever I attack with Windmake Rot, all the other creatures I attack with it, I gain one life for each attacking creature. It's not life link, but it is life gain. Torrential Gear Hulk. That's going to come in handy with a lot of spells I cast. Counter spells, you know, and all those good spells that you cast in EDH. This I just pulled the other day. Worm Coil Engine. If it dies, I get two 3-3 three, three tokens. It's all up. It's all plus. So if I bring, can bring this back from the graveyard, I can do it over and over again. <clears throat> this one is a key one to bounce. I, I exile a creature an opponent has for each opponent. This is crazy good with bounce. <clears throat> if I need a little pillow fording, Blazing Archon, what can you say? Creatures can't attack me. I can attack them. Other opponents can attack each other. They just can't attack me. Ray of Dawnbringer. This goes in hand in hand when I say bring him stuff back. Worm Coil Engine. Come back in with Raya. Not bad. Now I'm going to go to my spells. Typical spells played a lot. When you're playing white, you exile stuff. You don't want stuff going to the graveyard. So you exile it. Sword of Plowshares. They gain a little life. Big deal. Path to Exile. They get a land. Okay, that could. I've used this on my own creatures. I say Path to Token. I need a land. I got now. I got a land. Counterspell Negate for uh, non-creature spells, and then yeah, the, the the dreaded Cyclonic Rift. People groan just to think you might have this in your hand. Most spells in EDH are over four mana, so this is a cheap counter spell. And of course, you always got to have a signet in there. I'm only playing two colors, so the, the blue white signet's really important. I've been playing this off and on with a couple of decks uh, psychic surgery. People search their libraries. And when you're able to pick off the top two cards in the library and exile one of them, that can really devastate another person's deck. If you get a couple of their combo cards or just some of their key cards out of there they can't get to anymore, that's a big plus. 
playing tokens. So, of course, I got tangible virtue. I want my tokens to be pumped up, and I want to give them vigilance. So now they're pumped up, and they can block. Here's a new card. Akatra's Monument. White creature spells cost one generic last. Great. But every time I cast a creature spell, I get a, a token warrior with vigilance. Really, really good. Since my uh, general can make my uh, tokens unblockable, putting this on one of my tokens to make it unblockable to get a 4-4 attacking also seems really good. And if I have a way to duplicate the, the token before the end of the turn, then I got another white flying angel token. Here's a must. You got to tipple some of those cards that you just can't get rid of. This gets rid of any of them. Until, of course, until you, they get rid of that. Here's a little bit of a clone. I put a token, which there's a, the keyword token on my deck. Put a token on the battlefield as a copy of target creature you control. Then I get a scry two. It's three mana blue, which can be tough at times, but I'm, I think I got the mana straightened out so I, I can cast it pretty regularly. Rootborn Defenses. Someone goes to blow up the board. I save all my stuff. Plus, I get a copy of a token. My biggest token. Really good. They're going to they're gonna do a storm. <laughs> this stops storm. <laughs> Whisper Silk Cloak. My guy has Shroud and is unblockable. So, if I can get a big, big token out, I can attack. Two, two tokens are unblockable. Seems really, really good. Really good card that came out lately is Disallow. Um, this one can stop a Planeswalker. It can stop a lot of abilities. Uh, just counter a spell if you need to counter that big spell. This is really a good key card. Since my token creatures can be unblockable, to take away my opponent's half his life seems really, really good. You know, I don't care you got 100 life. Now you have 50. There you go. Another protect myself card, uh, Ghostly Prison. They got to pay two for each creature. So if they put out a hundred creatures thinking they're going to kill me, I don't think they're going to have two hundred mana to do it. Very trickery. <clears throat> this exiles a card uh, that I countered. This can be really handy. One of those key cards that this, if you got this in your hand, you want to keep it for those really big, big cards. It's going to just devastate everyone. <clears throat> Dark Steel ingot. The key thing about this, it makes any color, plus it's indestructible. So even if they blow up the board, I'm still going to have this. The only thing I have to worry about is if I have to sacrifice it. Spear of Hiliod. This is a great defensive card. It also pumps up your creatures, so it's a, it's a double-edged sword. My creatures get bigger. If you attack me, I take a little bit of damage. I'm going to destroy your creature. In our set, because I can pillow forward a little bit to ultimate... A couple of these um, planeswalkers it can really take over the game the ultimate on this one is you can't play non my opponents cannot play non-creature spells I don't have to worry about counter spells ever again I don't have to worry about them exiling my creatures or anything like that so really good if I can uh, ultimate it return to dust this can be good as an instant on their turn when they're gonna attack you with Say it worm coil engine themselves. I'm just going to exile the thing, remove it from the game. If I play it on my main turn, I get to do either two artifacts, artifact enchantment. It's, it's going to be really nice because I am exiling it. Another one of the new cards commit and memory. If you got that one or one tournament that keeps coming out and you can't get rid of it, have them shuffle it to the second card in their library and then use the second ability to make them shuffle their library. Now it's going to be a while before I get that card, you hope. Great instant for tokens. Creates a 1-1 one, one bird creature token and then populates. If I got another 5-5 five, five, five token, I'll populate that. But I also got a little white flyer too. Uh, instant speed, great for blocking. Can't say enough about this card. If I have already two of something, say, say I, uh, my indestructible land. I can enchant my land, and I'm going to put a land out every turn. And if I get up to eight lands, I just win the game. Pretty good. Another Planeswalker. Another one with a, when I'm concerned about the emblem. Uh, they can't, my opponents cannot untap more than two tournaments during their untap phase. That's stupid good. 
Rewind, free counterspell. Here's a good card that uh, it's a little expensive, but it lets me land cycle if I need to for two. Or it puts out four 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying. So another, if they're attacking with a bunch of flyers, I, can, I, can, I can't do it on sorcery speed, but I can do this on my turn and put four 1-1 one, one white bird tokens if I got uh, some of the counters or uh, enchantments to pump, pump, pump up my tokens. They're big. Since you're making so many tokens and so many creatures are coming in, this card is amazing. All my creatures just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually they're not going to be able to block all my stuff. Here's a counter spell I like. It's a little bit expensive, but it does investigate three times, so you get three clue tokens out. So at any time, you're using the revolt um, option, or you just need cards. This will trigger that stuff. And here we talk about revolt. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, put a unity counter on Call of Unity. Creatures you control get one one for each counter on it. So if I had the three clues, now I got three counters. All my creatures get plus three plus three. Really, really good. This thing is crazy good. If I cast an instant sorcery, and you've seen a bunch of my instant sorceries. I get a XX colorless construct artifact creature token equal to its spell cost. That's why I'm playing some of those expensive counter spells. We've got to get a 5 5 guy out. And then I can exile this guy as long as I have three and he puts out artifact creatures. I get all my instants and uh, sorceries back in my hand. Really, really crazy good. <clears throat> Increasing dev devotion. This guy puts out five white human creature tokens. Then I can flash it back to put 10 out. That's 15 creatures. Playing some enchantments. If you're gonna play enchantments, you're playing tokens, you gotta to put sigil out. Uh, I'm gonna get a four, four white angel creature token. Okay, it, it's, it's crazy good if you're playing other enchantments. Love this guy, um, well, the spell. I can create a token of an artifact. And I get to create a token, or create a token that's a copy of target creature that turns into an artifact. Just amazing. I can pick my stuff, their stuff. It's just really, really good. There's a big old card engine right here. I draw cards, shuffle it back in my library, draw some more cards if I draw it again. And treat the angels. Big time. A bunch. If you can miracle draw this and play it, yeah, you can have 10... Four fire white creature tokens and game over pretty much. <clears throat> Skull clamp. If a creature dies and this is on it, I draw two cards. So another draw engine. That's my deck. Thank you guys. And come out and check us out at Collector Mania out here in Parker, Colorado. Have a good one.